we were talking before about moving to consider joint entropies, and that means considering uh, the uncertainty in several variables. We hinted a little bit about how that total uncertainty may be different in general to when we consider the uncertainty about each variable on their own. So the reason that is different is because we can consider what, what if we already know something that may pertain to variable x when we're considering the uncertainty in x. Instead of just thinking about the uncertainty in x in general, what if we already know something that may change our surprise or uncertainty about x? How can we quantify the uncertainty that's left in variable x given what we already know? This is where the conditional entropy comes in. It's the surprise, either, uh, the, either the specific surprise from a given realization or the average uncertainty that remains about a given sample of variable x if we already know some other sample y of variable y, big y. We denote the conditional entropy using the bar symbol here. So this, this value represents, uh, represents the, con the conditional Shannon information content of realization x, given that we've already read realization y, or we can look at the capital letters denoting the average uncertainty for the variable x given a reading from the variable y. In both cases, we're simply looking at the difference between the joint surprise or the joint entropy minus what we call the marginal entropy of uh, realization y or variable y. So here we talk about marginals, marginals when we're looking at single variables, okay, in, in a joint setting. So it's a fairly straightforward, uh, straight, fairly straightforward thing to write down. We're simply writing down now, instead of uh, the Shannon information content being uh, the minus log of the probability of X, we're now just changing to look at the conditional probability of X given Y. So that's fairly straightforward to write down. And again, down here for the average, we write down our conditional Shannon information content and we average over the joint space of X and Y. We can think about these, uh, these surprises, or, or gen more generally, the average entropies. We can think about them graphically. We can draw Venn diagrams to represent the uncertainty or the information content in each variable. So we can draw one circle to represent uh, the entropy for variable X, and we can draw another circle to represent uh, the entropy for the variable Y. Now, in general, these circles showing the uncertainty about the variables, the information contained in them, they may be overlapping in general. So to draw something fully general, we do draw them with some overlap and some sections that are not overlapping. The entropy for variable X is the full total of this circle here, it includes what is overlapping with Y and what is not, and same for variable Y. The joint entropy of these two considered together is the sum of these three separate areas here. Now notice, we're not adding the two circles because that would double count this overlapping section. For the joint entropy, we add the three separate areas and don't double count that section. And that's why graphically, we can see that the joint entropy is not necessarily as large as the separate sum of, ent of marginal entropies here. We can then look graphically at what the conditional entropy is. We can say, well, the conditional entropy of X is the uncertainty left in this area of X after we know what we learnt from Y. So that is what's left in this crescent shape here of the circle representing the entropy of X after we take out this section that Y informed us about. Okay, This is a very classic diagrammatic way to represent entropies and conditional entropies. Considering the properties of conditional entropies then, what we know is that the average conditional entropy is always less than or equal to the unconditioned entropy. Okay, so on average, learning the value of Y reduces the uncertainty that we have about X. On average, or it, it does not increase the uncertainty, I should say, on average. It may leave the uncertainty the same, but it's not gonna increase it on average. And it can't go below zero, same as an ordinary entropy. So as I say, it may not decrease the entropy. We may find that the conditional entropy for X given Y is the same as the unconditioned entropy of X. And that is the case if our variables X and Y are independent. At the other extreme, 
our conditional entropy being zero simply means there is no surprise left in X once we know Y. Thinking about that diagrammatically here, that would mean there is nothing left in X. There is nothing left in X in this section here after we know Y. So all the information in X would be contained inside Y. To take an example here, coming back to looking at coding characters in English text, to ask the question, which, what variable, or what is an example of a variable Y that would drop the uncertainty of a variable X here, the a variable X being the character that we, we see in the text, what would drop it to some other conditional entropy and therefore also drop the code length for a conditional encoding of an incoming character? So we talked earlier about thinking about entropy as, as a code length. We can also think about conditional code lengths. What if our receiver already knows something that we know? Can we save some code by using that knowledge in the coding scheme? So here, considering coding letters in English text, we can think about coding our letter given the previous letter that came beforehand. So using the context of the series of letters, that changes the probability of the next character. We can think about uh, sequences of letters as Markov chains. This comes back to the example I gave before. If we see a Q, we are fairly certain that the next letter in our stream of letters is going to be a U. So we have very low uncertainty about what comes next in that case. We can think about an interpretation there in terms of conditional entropy. Our conditional entropy of the next character, if the previous character was U, is very, uh, sorry, if the previous character was Q, we, are we have very low surprise in encountering a U next. So we can see that the conditional entropy of one character given the character beforehand is generally lower than the entropy of the given character otherwise. And the interpretation of that in terms of code lengths is if we use the context, that drops the amount of code that we have to use for each letter. A couple of exercises which we won't cover now, I'll leave those separate. So that brings us to the end of our first lecture in our Information Theory and Complex Systems course. In this lecture, we've, we've taken an introduction to information theory, looking at entropy, the fundamental measure of information theory. So I've introduced you to the ideas of uncertainty and surprise as effectively, as, as introducing the idea that we can, we can have a variable that we sample realizations from. With each realization, we may be surprised to some extent about what we see and we will always have some surprise if our variable takes different values. So surprise is what we see from an individual realization. We can talk about uncertainty in terms of uh, the average surprise that we see or how uncertain we are before we take a draw there. We look mathematically then at quantifying the, uh, these ideas, in particular looking at entropy as minus p log p. Okay, so the, the minus log p was the Shannon information content, the surprise, the average entropy was an average over those log p's. So we know how to calculate entropy now. So now that we've considered uncertainty, you remember earlier that I said information is a reduction in uncertainty. So information and uncertainty are two sides of the same coin. So coming up, we're gonna talk about measuring information in that way.